We're waiting on Kevin still anyway, so. Kevin's still not here. Okay. Others said they were in support of it. Not much. How are you doing? Going through Everybody it. Everybody said they were in support of it, but then after it was but then, I don't made, think and then so. no vote. If you want, I have them pulled up right. on my phone so if you want to So looking at it, there's no vote call. Yeah. So we'll, we're, we're going to do that quickly at the beginning of the meeting. Oh. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hello. You got it? When you're ready, Kevin, just let us know. Ready? Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. We're going to start the meeting in just a second. Uh, I guess first thing we'll do is, has everybody had a chance to review the minutes for December 1st? And apparently, we still need to approve the minutes for November 21st. I thought we did that, but I got a little note here saying we hadn't yet, so. I thought we had, but. We may, have, I think we approved them. You just needed to sign a copy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that was not what the notes said, but that's okay. I think there was a, a correction. So, I, and we approved them, but didn't. Right, right. Correct. Yes. All right. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Okay. For, for that date. For, yeah. For, no, the December, last week. December 1st. The last oh, meeting. Yeah. Yes. All right. I'll accept the motion if one is given. I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, thank you. All right, I have a question. Yep. What's your question? December 1st? December 1st. Um, I'm trying to look at it because I read it, but this is Tiffany's phone. Um, uh, there was a there was a point in the minutes where it says that 15 students were private tuition. Yes. Okay. My understanding is that Mr. Dassau says there was eight or nine, and Mary corrected him by saying it was 14, not 15. Is that the same recollection that everybody else has? Oh, Let me look at my notes. I have 14. That's what I wrote down was Mary made a correction at 14 students. Is that what I had on my note? Is there a correction that you want to make? Huh? Is there a correction then? Yeah, on the minutes it says 15, but I, I didn't print out my minutes, but I read them. Yeah, I see it right here. It says 15. So that, that's so I'm right. asking that to be corrected to 14 unless anybody that's on the board objects to that. No objection. No objection. My end. Um, there was one other one and I can't find it in there. I just had one suggestion for clarification. Um, and I might have missed it, Kevin, but I, I would recommend that someplace when we reference MRI, that we maybe call them first municipal resource, and then you can call them MRI. So my line of work in MRI is a 
you know, diagnostic. MRI is for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's municipal resource what? Inc. In yeah, incorporated. Okay. I have no objection to that, Terrence. <clears throat> My only other um, correction, on page five, um, second, third bullet point, I guess, down, Ben asks about warrant articles. Um, I noted that their capital reserve request would be the 125. Um, I'm pretty sure I said there would be a deficit warrant article. I believe you are correct, actually. I think We've I talked about it numerous yeah. times, and so I don't, yeah, I don't I, want to present differently here. We're, you know, we know remember, there's a deficit warrant article. I do remember it being mentioned that there was going to be one. The only thing that wasn't sure of is the exact price that was going to Perhaps. be on that. And I do have some more information to discuss about that today. Any objections? Well, I think Teresa still had one more yep. thing. She was... I meant to that in change. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, no. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? I'll accept the uh Amendments. I'll add the amendments to my motion to accept the minutes. All right. Second. Second. All right. All in favor is amended. Aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. Those are approved. Teresa, you had something you wanted to. No. 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 no we voted for it as amended. Suggesting a, a rolling public discussion as we're going? Yeah, as okay. we go. You know, I don't want them, I'm saying like the review administration. Okay. You know, at the end of us, you know, asking our questions and getting information about administration, I'm asking that the public be able to ask a question if they're questioning. At that point. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's fine. And not, not necessarily like every individual line right. item, just that group. That, that group, like the special education would be everything special education, not... Right. Right, Absolutely. yeah. Yep. Okay. Because I think it's, it's, it's imperative that we kind of stay on the same page and try to get the same information that we're getting and whatnot. It's less confusing to go back and forth and stuff. Understood. All right, yeah, I, I have no objection in principle to that. That's fine. Does anybody have an objection? As yeah. long as we don't fall down the rabbit hole where it becomes, as long as we don't become redundant in our questions yeah. just so that yeah. the next person can ask the question. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the, right. Chair, the chair reserves the right to squash yeah. discussion. So. And I also, the one other thing is, I want to see who's on, who's on the school board right now. I oh. Those two, um, 
those three. So it's, it's JR and Todd, Emily Holmes, and our fifth member, Tina, is, is home tonight. I've never met Emily Holmes. Hi, Emily. I'm Teresa. How are you? Nice to meet you. Hi, Emily. <laughs> I feel like the school will be up front. I, I, I'm sorry. In the they should... Typically, when we meet at the school, we do have the school board at the same table. I don't understand why they're not, like, next to you. You shouldn't be the only ones that Social, the social distancing. Well, yeah, we, I mean, we were trying to... I, it was something that me and Carrie talked about, too, trying to figure out a way to line everybody up, keep them social distance, and not have their backs to everybody else that's here, and not have them stretch all the way down to the other end of the building. Put them up front, put them up front, six feet apart. They voted on this budget, not just Lindsay. She, you know, she's given us all these, you know, answers to our questions, but there's three or four of them that are here today to be able to sit up front and say something if they want to say something. I feel like they're being ostracized by putting them way back there and not allowing them to say, hey, I want to clarify something. That's just my feeling. Yeah. That, you know, I guess well, I mean, I, we, I think we all have a, a due respect for the positions they hold, and if they'd like a different position uh, to be up, a different seating arrangement, I have, to come up front? I have no objection to I that. I think they sat there intentionally, I, 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 I believe so, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they want you to get all the books. They well, have, I, they... Well, welcome to deliver this session, because she <laughs> takes all the bullets for you guys. <laughs> all right. So the uh, next thing I wanted to go over is uh, at the last meeting, there was uh, a confusion and about policy. After reviewing the emails, it is uh, concluded that we had failed to actually proper rat properly ratify a decision that a majority of the board was inclined to support. So we're going to fix that tonight. So I'm going to present a motion that masks be a requirement for participants at this unless otherwise stated by the governor's order. Uh, that we adhere to a mask policy. I'll second. And my point of order, discussion. You, you people already voted for that. Uh, we, we re after reviewing the email, we had not codified it. We had agreed to in in principle, but we actually failed to actually call for a vote. Once we failed to call for a vote, but you took a telephone or an email vote. Which in that email string uh, strand. Uh, it was recognized that we'd actually failed to actually have a vote. We asked for an opinion, people gave their opinion, and then when your email came in... I you, made a motion um, yeah. in email and said, if we're going to have a conversation, then it should be an official chain that we're following. Right. And so to keep it official, I said, I will make the motion because we're not, we can't have a conversation in that context without it being part of our minutes. Yep. So I made the motion, I voted yes. Chester seconded the motion, he voted yes. Nobody else voted. So there was a motion made and a second. There was oh. emails exchanged. Which, which are all? With everyone, with the exception, I emailed from people that it was an illegal vote because it's not under exigent circumstances where a budget committee should be making that. And I, I would have voted to have a mandatory mask, but it's illegal unless it's an emergency exigent situation and voting on a mask or not voting on a mask, in my opinion, is not an emergency situation. You could have called for a meeting and posted it for 48 hours. Well, the advantage in this instance is since we didn't take the vote, we didn't create any irregularities, but I'd like to get it resolved tonight if we could. It's not going to be resolved. It, it, it can be resolved by you people. I'm still going to vote no, and I would have voted yes, but I still believe that that vote that you guys took and mandated for that gentleman back there that didn't have a mask and you questioned him last week on it, it still was illegal. Well, it wouldn't there be, was, it wouldn't be under sorry. the context of a vote today. I have a disagreement. Yeah, no, that's fine. To make, uh, you can, can make a motion that's been seconded. It's illegal for us to take any kind of email vote or any kind of email opinion on that particular situation. We were voting to mandate a mask requirement. Thank you, Teresa. You're welcome. Um, also, just for clarification, your motion kind of contradicts itself. Um, you, you made a motion to have a mask requirement unless otherwise 
um, noted by the governor's executive order, and the governor's executive order says that masks are mandatory when socially, social distancing is not. Um, I, I, I believe there's like a health thing and there's other exemptions. In that. Well, there's a bunch of exemptions, and if you, yeah. can't, if you can't social distance, then it's a requirement, but if you can social distance, it's not a requirement. No. That's what the governor's executive order says, so. Mm -hmm. So is your in, is your in my, my intention is to require masks as long as you as long as it doesn't violate the intention of the governor's order. Which so it, that gentleman which it would. Guys are saying is that gentleman back there that's six feet apart doesn't have to have a mask on. Not by the governor's order, no. That's right. That's, I do not second if that's your. The, 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 my my intention is to have people who can wear masks to wear masks. I was referring to so, medical perfect. exemption. I, 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 we can play the game all day long, but m the intention is that masks should be worn. Because that, you know, that was the, you know, that, that's, that's just the world we are in right now. We're in a public meeting. Unless there's a medical reason or a reason outlined that would, that would prevent a person from wearing it, we should wear them. I don't understand why this is such a discussion. Because of the way you work the motion, and that's why it's what you right. that's what Ben is trying to tell you. Okay. Then how, would like we a, fix, then how do we fix it? I, how about um, masks are required for participation in the budget committee meeting unless a health condition prohibits. Fine. That would be a motion. I would second that. All right. Or make it and you can second it. Or I'll, you make it also. You go ahead, Kevin. Can you repeat the motion, please? One second. We're just going to repeat it for him and then you can, I'll call on you. <coughs> go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so the motion would be that masks are required for anyone participating in the budget committee meetings unless exempted by health. Right. You wanted to say, Todd, you wanted to say something? I believe I'm under no obligation to ask them what medical reason they. So you're going to ask them to leave? No, I, that's not what I said. You're going to have to look at this budget committee votes on total one vote. Unless it's a medical, which is a motion that's excellent. But unless they can produce something that says medical. I don't believe we can. I don't believe we can ask for that. I don't believe we can ask for that. No, the assumption has to be that if you're not wearing a mask, you're doing so because of a health condition. We're right. not allowed to ask that. Right, it's against the law. Right, so we will just make that assumption in this instance. And, and just for the record, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be voting no on this also, only because it does contradict the governor's executive order. All right. <coughs> People can vote their conscience. Yep. Is there any other discussion? All right. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. No. All opposed? No. no. What was? What was Tiffany? What did you vote? No. No. Yeah, all right. It was defeated. All right. Well, let's, I guess the last we'll talk about that. No. No. Um, to further the conversation, if for any reason the budget committee has to meet again, I'd like us to consider Zoom meetings. Well, I mean, we're going to have to continue to meet even once we're done with the school. We have additional meetings. I'm sure Chester is going to review the calendar because we have some timelines coming up. And so I'd like there to be consideration for Zoom. We will discuss that. Thank you. All right. 
So, uh, uh, before we move on to the school budget, which I know that's what we're here for, I know I told a couple of you individually, but uh, there was some updates left on the table for the town's portion of the budget. Um, <clears throat> the one that you see uh, towards the top of the pile for the Conant Library that Dennis came in about and talked to us. Um, after he went back to the trustees and they re-looked at the budget, they ended up still putting forward the same budget that the select board had originally approved, the first budget that was put out, which is the budget you have in, that is in front of you now. So the select board doesn't have to re-vote? We don't have to revisit that. We've already approved that one. The budget committee tabled that that budget because Dennis still hadn't um, presented it to the trustees for them to vote on. So we do still have to revisit that. Which we'll do now. I don't have that paper in front of me. It's in my budget book inside or in the office. Um, yeah, I've, I've got one. It's just it's in my budget book already that I left in the office. I didn't think to bring the town budget book out with me. Um, uh, Conant Library, yeah, the 88575 is what the Board of Selectmen approved. Well, Dennis had asked for a lot more than that. This is his revised ask. Well, thank God we tabled it because it just had a lot of stuff that was unanswered then, right? Right. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That's approved. All right. Let's refer to page one and, of the hymnal. And the only other thing I wanted to inform the budget committee is in the updates from the town, um, the under the health agencies, um, we haven't received the actual form yet from them, but we had originally, the budget committee and the no, the Budget Committee had originally approved $10,000 for the Southwest Regional Planning Commission because that's what they were asking for. And they've actually changed their request. Yeah, if I can stop pushing the wrong button. Um, they're going to be sending us the form, but their new request is going to be for $9,472, so $528 less than what we approved. So once we have that, we'll have to revisit that too to change that amount. That's always good news. Uh, I don't know that. Um, that Southwest Regional Planning said they would give us a reasoning for that. Right. Yeah, I, I found it odd that they would request 10000 and come back to us and be like, oh, never mind, we only need, we need less than that actually. That's just a good way to get repeat business with us. Though. Yeah. That's it for the town budget stuff. So, you want to vote to that then? Uh, not yet, just because we haven't. They're filling out a new request form to turn in that will have a def, uh, explanation for the new request. So, we can revisit it then. I just wanted to say one thing though, too, since we're doing some kind of house cleaning, and the school board might be interested in that. Can you? Uh, Carrie sent us all emails, and I spoke with her this morning about Chesterfield is sponsoring a Zoom kind of thing for a uh, budget, budget, um, you know, class it, a class by Zoom. Yep. And it's on December 17th from 6 to 8 o'clock at night. And if you agree to it, there's a large amount of money that the town's actually paying of $350. And she hasn't heard from anybody from the budget committee whether they want to do it. She said the only one she heard from was me. So if you guys want to do that and be part of the Zoom, she's going to get 
uh, in enrollment to Chesterfield, who will then send you a package and uh, put you on the administrative to be welcomed into the Zoom on December 17th. So somebody, anybody from the budget committee that's interested in going on in that class, please see me so I can email her, call her tomorrow and let her know that what members of the budget committee beside myself want to do that. And I don't know if we want to let the um, school board know. We're actually, that's a school board meeting night. Okay. So we're, we're already in a meeting from 6.30 until. Oh, on December 17th. It's a Thursday, right? I have that date. Right? Yeah. It's a Thursday. That's why I can't make it. Yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, I, I already had prior arrangements for something that night. So. so there's two there right here. Are you guys interested? I, I can't make it. I've got to work. Uh, oh, you're working? Are you interested? Count me in. Retail in December. Count me in. <laughs> okay, so I can tell so, her. So Tiffany yeah. and Teresa? Yeah. And then you guys can do, <clears throat> excuse me, any important information that you feel you, you could pass on to the rest of the budget committee yeah, afterwards. I was going to say, or if there's a PowerPoint. Yeah. So you know, yeah. Yes, please. Right. Yeah, when you do when you do receive the packet, if Carrie doesn't get her own packet, um, maybe just ask Carrie to copy us off yeah, one each for everybody. Yep. Okay. All right. Great. So everybody's had a week to go through this and to look at things. We hadn't gotten the information uh, for some of the points until recently today. But what we'll do is we're going to start on a page. And if there are questions or motions on the lines or discussion from the room, we'll take it in an orderly fashion, one page at a time. Chester, would you like to go through the documents that were provided? Because these were all of the follow-up questions and answers from last week. That seems prudent. I, I personally think that's more important than going yeah. back I, page I, by page. No, that's fine, actually, that's fine. We already did that, and we had a bunch of questions, and yeah, now we yeah, have the yeah. answers, so. No, that's fine. Lindsay, if you'd like to take the floor on it. Um, I will, but I'm also going to ask um, Val Carey, our building principal, because there were a number of these questions that, um, well, that she's behind answering. So I think first was a question with regard to staffing. So there are two documents that should, I'm, I'm assuming we all have them in the same order. So the first and second page, staffing options for 21, 22, and an example of what it would look like in each of these scenarios. So you may recall that the board voted to follow scenario two, which was return to in-person school, no distancing requirements, and remote only is an option. So if you look at the first grade example in scenario two, if we have 42 students and we're able to put them in a full class each, um, but we have nine remote students, and I just want to note the remote only number represents the current students that we have remote. So it, it takes into, it's an assumption that those students would likely remain remote only. Um, it, it could be more, it could be a little bit less, but so scenario two allows for in-person class of 17, an in-person class of 16, and then a class of remote only students of nine. That's the particular scenario that we chose because we don't have a crystal ball to know that there's going to be no COVID. As you can see, if there was no COVID in that scenario, we would have two full 21 per kid classes. Um, and as you work your way down the scenarios, you know, scenario four, return to in-school distancing requirements and remote only. And you can see how we have to really break those classes out. Um, In scenario two, we're also taking into consideration that one teacher would be teaching across two grade levels 
in the remote only setting. So the teacher who you see here with the remote only class in scenario two for first grade is also teaching the remote only class for second grade. Okay. So there was kind of a question how we arrived at that scenario two. There was a question of what the staffing looked like for each of those scenarios. And I was the only one looking at the document. So now you have the, the complete document. Um, and we also mentioned here, and we've mentioned it multiple times at our board meetings, we're clearly on record as saying, if we end up coming into the school year 21-22 and COVID is no longer a restriction, we will not be hiring the same amount of teachers as if we needed in scenario two. Okay. Is there any questions about anything that she's so far gone over? All right, let's move on. Another significant question was a breakdown of some of the staff development lines. They're listed in various places throughout the budget because they fall under different functions whether it's for non-CBU, the non-discretionary, or the SAU. So here is an outline of all of the various, um, the three different staff development lines. Um, staff yes, yeah, staff development lines. Okay. Um, and they include the non-CBU, the non-discretionary, and the SAU. Um, there's an outline of what they might include conferences, workshops, um, regardless of whether our employees are part of the teachers union or, or not, um, th almost all of our employees at the school are certified in some way. So they all have certifications and licensing, as we mentioned before, that they have to maintain. So staff development for non-CBU, those are our non-collective bargaining, would include the nurse, occupational therapist, the OT assistant, speech, uh, the social worker, our adjustment counselor, um, the integration specialist. Staff development also falls under non-discretionary. This line is av available for administrators for whether it be um, targeted or a whole school improvement goals. So there may be times when we're working on professional development goals as a school we talked about that actually a lot last year during, develop, um, during deliberative, how the school does regularly update their goals for training. So this might be um, an area where we've identified a need for a certain group um, and that would be where the staff development money is drawn from. The final one is the SAU. Um, those employees include business managers, the service, business services staff, uh, facilities director, our special education director, our administrative assistant to our super in, superintendent and the SAU, technology staff, and again, those are conferences and trainings, workshops, things that they might need to um, go to to continue their certification um, and or licensings. Sure. That would be the business manager, the business services staff, the facilities director, special education, the administrative assistant, and technology staff. And for anybody who's been following along online or checking the documents from the budget building sessions that um, I have been posting um, to both the board Facebook page, the Ashwila General Store, and shutting off comments and posting on Winchester working together, all of these documents will be added to that folder as well, so they'll be accessible by the greater population. Does anybody else have any questions about this page? All right. Mm -hmm. If you like. Please. Val Carey, Winchester School Principal. So I just wanted to, there was an additional question um, at the last meeting um, where it was brought up that um, we may still be in COVID and so travel and conferences may be less. 
So these, these lines were cut either in half or completely to zero in the cut from uh, what was proposed last year for this budget and what is actually in this budget. So we did propose um, an increase, but not an increase back to what they would be. Um, and the reasoning for that is we don't know where we'll be as far as COVID goes. So there may be some reduced costs as far as not needing to travel. In this current year, um, lots of conferences were canceled or postponed until next year with the hope that we'd be able to do them. I think regardless of where we are in COVID, those organizations will figure out how to run conferences um, in order to continue with their business. So I think there will be conferences to attend. Um, probably more of them will be in an online format, so there will be reduced cost. But we do need to get back to a place where we're able to fund all of those positions seeking um, their certifications and keeping their licensing. In some cases, we had um, planned trainings or courses for certain staff um, for our school improvement goals that would have happened this year had we not two things had COVID and reduced that budget. So in order to get back on track with those goals, the intent was to put some money back in those lines, but not to fully fund it back to where it was before the cut because of COVID. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. All right. <clears throat> I'm pretty much just going in order of the packet. Yep, so no, the next perfect. question came up was about the school uh, psychologist contract. Um, the question. Okay. Um, you, you do have a you do have a, a piece of paper that has everything she's saying broken down on it. Uh, the school. No, this is a packet. Uh, right. I think it's this packet of paper right. By your coffee. Uh, there we go. There you go. There you go. And I'm on page four. So you can fast forward. Um, the, the next question that came up was the school psychologist contract breakdown. This, con this question came up because twofold. Uh, one, it's, uh, it's a service that we now have to contract because we've been unable to hire the position at the school specifically. And two, it's broken out for funding in two different places. So it's not redundant. It has to be classified where it's going to pull from the budget. Those places are the IDEA grant, which is special education. Under function 2140, the school psychologist salary benefits line, and also under the budget function 1200, which is the special education program and related services. So then the total contracted services is 150,000, 20 pulls from the grant, um, just shy of 70 pulls from the uh, salary benefits line, and then 60 pulls from the related services. At the last meeting, there was a question about how we were paying how, in the budget. So the contracted service pays from three different lines or three different places. It pays out of the uh, IDEA grant, 20,000. Um, then there are two uh, functions. One is the salary benefits line. And then it also comes out of related services for special education. It's a, just shy of 70,000, 69,237. And then it's about 60,000 out of the related services. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about this page? Okay. This goes right into, um, part of that question was about related services. The total line is 375,000. The things that we pay from that line include, as noted, the school psychologist, our um, certified occupational therapy assistant. You'll notice also on that document that a, this is the portion that we pay um, uh, for the shared contract with Hinsdale, and then there's a um, 
22. 22,000 is our responsibility. It's on the page there, Teresa. And then actually the next page is the occupational therapy services breakdown. So I'm not, you can, we can look at that one after. Um, other things that get paid from related services for special education, uh, learning speech therapy services, deaf and hard of hearing services, and individual and consulting services for speech and OT. The largest part of that is the paraprofessional case management and out of district. Excuse me, case management to out of district students. Any questions on this page? I think, do you have some clarification? Are you looking at related services, special education? What is, did it's I miss? on the next page. That gotcha. Oh, Thank so you. We, 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 That's we, okay. We hadn't got there yet. It's true. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. That's right. In anticipation of a question coming, I'm certain. I'll just wait. Let me know. I guess we can move on to the next page. You had something on your mind, Teresa? Well, I think I think they kind of at this point they're blending. No. Do you want me to answer that question? Sure. Okay. So um, we, as the Winchester School District, hire the occupational therapist. So they are our employee. We pay salary, um, FICA, New Hampshire retirement, and if they take benefits, we would pay their benefits. We share that position with Hinsdale 50%. So they would pay us back 50% of that salary and benefits total. So on your sheet, you see total cost, salary, FICA, New Hampshire retirement. It states the 50% total is paid by Hinsdale. Winchester's cost is listed there. And then this comes out of the budget function 2160, which is occupational therapies. The certified occupational therapy assistant or CODA, um, that's a loaded hourly rate. So that means um, salary and any benefits with that position. That is a Hinsdale employee which we employ for one and a half days per week, seven hour days. So the total that we pay for that COTA in this current year is 19624.50. What we have budgeted into the related services line for next year is $22,000, which is a projected cost for the 20. 22 fiscal year because that is a Hinsdale employee and if that person receives a raise under their typical pay structure we're responsible for our percentage of it um, for their loaded hourly rate so that's not an hourly rate as far as salary goes it's loaded because it has all of the benefits retirement FICA and all those things applied to it as well thank you sure thank you <clears throat> All right, next page. Are we skipping OT services breakdown? We're all set with that one too, right? Yeah. So we're on to position comparison? That's correct. Okay. Uh, so the next question that came up um, was a question with regard to um, the salaries of our SAU staff, however, that, that includes the superintendent, business administrator, the principal, facilities uh, director, administrative assistant, staff accountant, and maintenance supervisor. And um, we field this question a lot, so actually we, we had a, a lot of this information kind of kicking around. Uh, and that is a comparison of various districts that are equal or as, as equal as possible in size to us trying to make an apples to apples comparison whenever possible. Um, shows you, you know, where we come in um, below average, uh, what the average is, and uh, what our current salary is for each of those positions. <coughs> uh, 
I got a few questions on this page. Okay. Um, first, where did we, where do you come up with that number of students in house for Winchester? Because it, the, the, that much, them numbers much higher than any of the other numbers that are in the budget book. The, the 419. Right. That's. And the 160. The well, the 419 is not. I wasn't even touching the tuition students yet. That was just the. So the 419 is high because this document we um, were working on um, throughout the summer and as we were preparing for budget with the school board. So I mean that number could be adjusted to the 370, what it is at this point. Um, the the salaries that you'll see under Winchester are our current in this year salary also. They're not the um, what's proposed in the budget, which is a two and a half percent right, right. increase for those positions. So those, um, this is, as Lindsay mentioned, we've been uh, working on these periodically. The, the school board asks us for different things. So this document is a working document and that, that, that number has changed a bit then. Okay. Um, since you mentioned salary, um, I see the comparison here between um, four other towns compared to Winchester for salaries. Um, I was just curious with the superintendent's salary, the very first one on the line, is these other four towns, uh, do we know if those are full-time positions or part-time positions? That was going to be my question. Because I know ours is the lowest on the list, but ours is also a part-time position. I definitely did not say that our superintendent only works two and a half days a week, but he is part time and his time is divided between days in and working from home. So his, his salary is 32 hours. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Can't hear you. <laughs> I'm contracted for 102 days, and so my schedule is flexible depending on what's happening in the building. But yes, Ms. Picard is correct that I'm available 24-7. Yeah. Okay. Are those other positions, Lindsay, that were projected in the others, are they full-time positions or part-time? I'm, I'm actually um, not sure on that answer. I'd have to get back to you. I believe they're part-time because Hinsdale is definitely a part-time. Um, and I believe in an effort to make an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, we, we would have looked at that, but I'll verify. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I know Hinsdale's part-time. And I know that's just the base salary because including benefits, it's much so higher. So a lot of this information came off of city data. It's, you know, a website that statistically kept, collects all the information, town size, school size, grade served, population in those schools. So that's the salary information was all confirmed via the administrative assistance and stuff like that. Um, so that's one of the reasons the student count doesn't represent this year's current student count necessarily for any of these districts. I am quite certain that the superintendent serving these smaller districts, would, it would be extremely unlikely that they would be full time. If you look at the students count comparatively to ours, I mean, especially like Grantham with a 217 student count I I can't swear they don't but I didn't was not able to confirm the superintendent's contracted days or contracted hours for each of these districts um, I believe that all of the other positions were full-time positions yeah thank you Ian Any other questions on this sheet? I just want to make a quick comment. 
by all means. Give for estimates. I'm just making a comment. Four estimates for a lot of schools that have less student population. And look at our principal's salary. She's got more students that she's overseeing than four other people, four other schools. And you're asking us to take other salaries and other tuition things, the number of students' tuition, and all that into account. And she's making $88,000. In other school, in Chester, it's 103000 I'm just making a comment. The next one is 105000 I'm just making a comment. I agree with your comments. Were there any other questions on that document? So the question came up um, and comes up quite a lot. It came up for our own board when talking about salary increases. Um, we talk about market adjustments. This is the kind of document that we use to try to review comparatively and ensure that we're competitive. Okay. I think the next document um, salary employees. Yep, the next two, I think, follow along with the question with regard to uh, salaries. What the increase proposed of the 2.5% um, for this first page and 3% for the second page. Um, I apologize because last week when we were talking about the various non-CBU employees, I said 2.5% and I need to correct myself because we did have um, a recommendation for 3% for uh, these specific, the speech and hearing, speech pathologist, excuse me, pathologist, guidance, the school nurse, OT, reading, and the uh, psychologist. Uh, and the reason for that was um, administration I don't want to say make, made a plea, but um, really felt it appropriate that those basically teaching staff that work alongside other teachers um, who did not receive a raise last year received just a little bit more um, in, instead of the 2.5%. So uh, these are the cost item. Um, you'll see the increase. So for the 2.5% for the out of district, the tech support, the administrative assistant, facilities, assistant principal, the business administrator, the special education coordinator, the superintendent and principal. That 2.5% um, is $14,505 between all of them. Uh, for the custodians, the maintenance supervisor, and the staff accountant. Um, that amount was just shy of $4,000. The total for all of those non-CBU was 18,488 for the 2.5%. And the total for the 3%, which was eight, eight positions is 12,500. $31. No, go ahead. And I'm sure Val would be more than willing. That was the first meeting question I had. Because um, the increase was listed here at $440,706 on the budget that we gave. This one here. I would love for her to, as long as you're... Of course. <laughs> so... How could we say no? 
<laughs> well, I appreciate that. So this um, salaried employees who received a 3% raise, they are not in a single line item anywhere in the budget because they fall into their own functions. So the guidance salaries are in the guidance department, speech and hearing are in their own department, OT is in their separate department, school nurse, reading specialist, psychologist, they have their own sections. So that 430, 242 wouldn't have been seen somewhere else in the regular budget for this group. So even though the account number is identical, they're, they're separate? The account number is not identical. Okay. If you look at the four digit number after the 100, you oh, see the yes, different yeah. function numbers. Yeah, some of them are identical, so yeah. those ones would be paired. But I missed that. Yeah. Okay. There's a combination of account numbers on the left-hand side, yeah. so you just have to compare it against the, the line on the budget. That's not an increase. That's, that's the total number, including the increase. The increase is $12,531.33 for all of those positions raises. What page, Teresa? Page one. Okay. The first line it says keep oh. Right here, Val. It's got the same, it's got the same account number here, and it don't add up to no 440,000. Those are all different account numbers. The first two lines, out of this report here, the, the first line is 100 dot 1100 dot. Mm -hmm. The out of district is 100 dot 1200. So the line that you're looking at on page one in your regular budget, Teresa, that's for regular education teachers. Those teachers are covered by the collective bargaining agreement. That's None of those teachers are in these two pages that we're looking at right now with the 2.5 or the 3%. Correct. <clears throat> yes. So I think, it, I mean, confusing is it's a complete coincidence that the total of those people's salaries is very close to the total increase for the teacher's salaries. That's a total coincidence. So that's what's confusing. But this page is not related to regular ed teachers at all. These are special education specialists or specialized positions that are all, right. And so part of, the, part of the discussion around this is that these are all positions that are critical shortage areas, meaning if we do not have people in those positions, we have a very difficult time finding qualified applicants for those positions. And if we do not have qualified applicants, we end up needing to contract with a service like we have done with school psychologists, which as you can see in the amount that went into related services, cost us about $60,000 more than we would pay to have our own employee. So this is a group of people who did not receive any raise this year because they were part of that non-CBU raises group that was cut when we made our cut after the March vote. They work alongside all of the teachers who are part of um, the unions who did receive raises each year this is a very hardworking group of people who are part of a critical shortage um, area of positions. They're very specialized, they're very skilled, and so our plea as the administration was to give them a 3% raise in this budget rather than the 2.5% raise that we were advocating for for the rest of the non-CBU group, CBU group, which was mostly administrators. Any other questions on these two pages? All right, the next question was about our out of district placements. Um, that, that total line item was 790,166. So we did break down um, how many students that included, which was the 14. Um, and each of those associated placement costs. Oh, here is 50, almost 
48. 48. 48. The low is 48, 6. The last one is the low. Line 14. Number 14. 48, and so the high was at how many? 81. 81. What is it? 81.8. It, it's uh, line uh, student number four. So the nuns that are even in the sevens right now. There's a couple that are close. Oh, there's one in the 81 right here. One times four is 81. The rest are 50 to 60. I'm saying 50 to 60,000. Did you project that you're going to have more, more students that are in private, in private, uh, private schools next year? So these are actual students that we actually have enrolled in specialized special ed programs outside of our district. So these students exist in those placements and the tuition cost is what we know their tuition cost to be for next year. And, and how long now. do we keep them on tuition? Like, do we know how many of these are gonna eventually uh, sleeve off or? Well, eventually they all do. Well, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, what I mean is how soon and when. Oh, sure. I mean, I, I don't have that information right That's now. Right. It's not relevant, really. And it becomes a little bit um, sticky um, if we're giving too much information, which that would allow sense. people to identify who the student is, even if we don't give the name. So mm -hmm. because it's such a, few, uh, such a small number of students, it's difficult to give much more information than this. Perfectly acceptable. The only thing I will add is that number 13, um, this is a student who... Um, we do not have the information about what that particular one is going to cost. This is a very new placement not made by us, received by us. So we've talked about that a lot of times. Sometimes we make a placement, meaning the student needs a change in placement because their needs are not being able to be met by the school. Other, in other cases, a student moves into the district and they're already <clears throat> placed or we're in the process of being placed. In some cases, the court is placing a student in a placement. In other cases, the student may be in foster care, and if they are identified, and we are the district where that student was removed from a home, we are the district responsible for that placement. So it could be any number of those things. I'm not gonna let you know which one for this, because no, it's just fine. one. Um, but we don't have the amount for that. It's a very new placement for us. So Chester, you had it down, you guys, the rest of you guys remember, you guys had it down I think the I think the question was I've got it right. what's an average for placement and the answer was it could be anywhere from 48 to in the 70s. Okay, so, so these are exact numbers, not just the estimate. So I, I would put it at Thank you. And yeah. those tuition rates tend to increase every year, as do everyone else's tuition rates. Um, so sometimes when we budget, then we get their numbers for the following year, and those numbers, you know could potentially go up slightly. Thank you. And just based on the average of those, the 13 uh, students that there is a price down for, um, it's just under 61,000 as the average. So, I mean, potentially looking at 850,000 instead of 790, depending on what the other bill could be. So I'm assuming here, right? You should just. <laughs> so if you want to grab a chair and sit closer. Uh, or something. It's fine. I can walk. Um, the other thing, too, is that sometimes these um, placements are transitional. And so it may not be a long term placement that would take the whole year. Um, and in the, there are a lot of opportunities for things to change within placements. So we try not to over budget that line um, if there's something that may be temporary. OK. Okay. Any other questions on that? All right. All right. Um, last but certainly not least, I think this is the last of the questions. There was um, some conversation with regard to uh, transportation. This is regular education transportation. So initially budgeted, um, this was based on removing the high school run, the elementary school bus, Excuse me. This estimate was based on removing the high school run, having an elementary school bus and a midday run, and projecting um, 
you know, for a regular year to year contract increase. Our actual and in progress cost is 281,000. It exceeded the budget number by about 78,000 due in large part um, for the necessity of adding a midday bus and an increase in our rate per bus. We are budgeting for regular education, uh, 473,735. This reflects a breakdown of about um, 59,000, we'll call it 60,000, um, which is about $83 a bus per day in an increase to the rate and adding back the fourth elementary bus and the high school runs. So for instance, if we were going to look at cutting out the high school bus again, um, it would be about 60,000, no? Did I have that wrong? I'm sorry, Val. Just doing quick math. The 60,000 represents the per bus per day um, for 180 days. So if you were going to reduce high school transportation, you wouldn't really be able to subtract um, there in the per bus per day. Um, that 60,000 is a rate increase per bus per day. Thank so you. Um, there would be a savings if we were to, in an ill-advised manner, remove again yeah. high school transportation from this budget or to remove the fourth elementary bus. That bus was removed then requiring students who live within two miles of the elementary school to not have transportation. Again, we do not advise that. So this is putting back in the fourth elementary bus and high school transportation. The way that the current contract is written is not giving us a separate cost for high school runs and elementary runs. There's a mileage difference and there's a um, sort of a surcharge difference for running the bus twice in the day, but the same buses would be used. So if you use three bus, there'd be a savings rather than four. If you didn't do the second run, there'd be a savings, but it's not. That 60,000 is the per bus per day rate increase. Thank you, Val. Okay, thank you, Lindsay, for the, that, those answers in the packet. And thank you, Val, and everyone else with yeah. the administration for putting together these answers. That would be the group. Um, I'd like to know if any of the school board members have questions or they are going to the budget, so I, I assume that you're in an agreement about bottom line budget. You're all in agreement with the bottom line budget? That was our vote. Okay. I, I still have a lot of adding to do now that we've oh. now that we've got the information that we requested and I did just see that Mary thank you just this evening did email me that bus con the bus contract that I wanted to review now, I just want It's actually a seven-year contract. And what year are we on now? This is our first year we just entered into. Okay. First year. And it's a seven-year contract? Correct. And why is there an increase in the rate right now? I mean, you may not be able to uh, project that and know that. Show up at you know on time, you know, 
you don't have to pay for the box, that's great, like the stuff that you added into the contract, but what about the, um, why is the rate going up? Why does the bus company have the rate go up when the cost of fuel is going down? Should put a Fitbit on you. <coughs> she has yeah. one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's getting her steps in. It's okay. <laughs> she wishes she was home again. That's what she wanted to text. It was easier to text Ken and have him run back and forth. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the we pay a fuel surcharge if the fuel is over a certain amount, and so the fuel surcharge is separated out. The rate increase is just what they're charging per bus at this point and everyone's rates increased as they um, bid this contract which all of these districts came together and put out it's the rates that we were given which are less than the rates of the competitors bid that came in but it happens to be more than the rates that we were paying in previous years i wonder if other school districts did a contract to seven years ago the contract was written the same um, so it was it went out as an RFP with all of the districts having the same um, things in there are ways out of the contract if we needed to get out of the contract which there previously hadn't been in in the way that it's in there so if we if something changed and we did not want to do the seven years there are ways to remove ourselves from that contract and we wouldn't have to, we wouldn't have to pay if we decided to do that then, right or you guys would. I don't know the answer to that I have not read the contract cover to cover Thank you. Teresa, just so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I'm going to print out the email um, so I have a paper version of the contract to read because I can't read it on my phone very well. If you want, I, I'll print you out a copy of it. Yeah, that would be good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So, what is the pleasure of this committee? Shall we trudge on? <clears throat> Well, honestly, no matter what, we're going to have to schedule another meeting because and without we being able to have time to review this information, there's no way to make any decisions right now on new information. I'd like to try to trudge on as much as possible. I would like to decrease our in-person meeting as greatly as we can. So well, what are we going to drudge on with though when we, well, I'm, well, we've, I, we've already gone page by page through the entire budget we came so up clearly with. you're thinking you'd like to cut the budget so let's just have that conversation where are you thinking you would cut from the budget for a better bottom line and perhaps we should make a motion so that we can have that discussion well I'm not prepared to make any motions and I'm not prepared to say in your words where I would cut from because we requested some information last week. We just got the answers for that that we're grateful for. But I mean, if we all want to sit here until midnight, I'll go print this bus contract out and start reading this. And then I'll start studying my budget book compared to the information we received tonight. Or I got to- I'm in favor for a recess if that's necessary. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I'm not sure what about the bus contract you're going to read that impacts your overall feeling about the budget itself. Well, I'm also much more comfortable having these conversations in a public setting as opposed to this conversation disseminating without us having control over how that conversation happens. I'm not having a conversation with anybody. I want, I want to be able to go home and review the questions I originally wrote in my budget book that I just got the answers to. I need time to review that. I, I don't want to sit here till midnight and, and review these answers that we just got. Well, I, I think there, uh, there is a lot of area here that had nothing to do with this that we could at least discuss. And, and, and there's, there's a lot of meat on this that we can talk about that has nothing to do with this packet that we You want to go back to it line by line again? Oh, I mean, we're going, just... we're going to eventually oh, okay. anyway. Uh, hey, at least the admin is with me now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, like, half of me agrees with Lindsay, half of me agrees with that. Uh, 
I got new information right now. I'm not willing to make a motion or approve a motion, and not because I'm going to decrease or increase the budget. I want to review it a little bit more in a comfort where I can look at it and detail it. I may look at something and say that you need to add money to that line item. I may look at stuff and say you want to decrease that line item based on stuff. So you need to be respectful, or you need to be respectful of that, because I guarantee you, and maybe I'm making an assumption, but I assume that you're very well versed with the budget, as am I, I think. And you and I, and maybe a couple of other people in this room would actually know the mill rate and all that other stuff. So I need to have that information so when people ask me either to support the budget or they end up doing what they did at the deliberative session last year, that we're not caught off guard. And we need to come together as a, you guys agree with that, we need to come together as a budget committee and support the school budget and support the school budget people whether I agree with the increases or don't agree with the increases and you do something. So he's just asking for more time. That doesn't mean the next meeting we won't be making a motion or a motion. You guys can still make a motion second and it passes, but I'll tell you right now, I'm not willing to vote on a bottom line budget right now without looking at it. And it's out of respect for Ben, and it's out of respect for both Lindsay. And Lindsay might want to do that, but I need to feel much more better about things, the information that you guys gave us, which was great. And I need to have some time to look at it and say, this is what I would do, this is what I might add, this is this decrease. That's just my personal thing. If there's a motion to approve this budget, whether it's 12.8 or whether it's $11 million, whatever, I'm just give an example. I'm not gonna vote to approve any budget until I look at it out of just feeling compassionate and passionate about this budget and, and seeing what needs to happen with the budget and not to have what happened last year where we couldn't even come up with an agreement. Tiffany, uh, where do you stand? I'm in agreement with Teresa. Okay, then let's talk schedules. Chester, where are you in agreement? I, I actually agree. This is a banner day for unexpected Everybody. things. I actually agree with Lindsay. <laughs> Danger things have happened, Chester. <laughs> oh, I, I'm not disagreeing. My concern, Teresa, frankly, is I am becoming increasingly uncomfortable meeting in person in a group full of people who might not be willing to wear a mask. I have personal reasons, and I am trying to protect my family while continuing to do my civics duty. And we talk a lot about people not wanting to wear masks, but we don't often talk about discriminating against people who do want to wear a mask. Yeah. And I'm so, a child, so I, I get what you're saying. So you're my concern that. is continuing to come back to this building in the middle of a pandemic. And I've been vocalizing that concern for a while. So if we would like to move to Zoom or have a meeting later this week, um, you know, that would probably be appropriate. Well, I, I, we, no matter how we cut it, we're running out of time. We have I, to... And the timeline is getting there as yeah. well. I mean, that's, that's something that I thought that we kind of went over last year. We have a timeline. Yeah. The last day for a public hearing, for our public hearing, is January 19th. Right. So, and I gotta tell you, I have been working on this budget, and people in this audience will be able to tell you, because I've spoken with people in this audience, and I've spoken more than people in this audience, and I'm not gonna do this and look at this until probably Saturday or Sunday, so it's gonna be next week. It's not gonna be this week. I'm not gonna agree to a meeting this week because I have other commitments and community service commitments, so I'm not gonna agree to a meeting until next week. What is the viability that we could have a Zoom cha uh, channel put together? Zoom? I think that we could utilize the school's platform if that would be appropriate. There's no additional cost to that, right? Okay. No. Can you, are you, when are you guys going to vote on um, the default budget and your contractual services that you're on now and up for next year? We do have the approximate default number. Um, we noted it at our board meeting last Thursday. It's okay. right around 11 million. Okay. 11.2. The default is 11.2. Approximately. 
of getting paid like hundred thousand, maybe it might be one hundred, it might be eleven point three. Does that include your contractual obligations for, for the same for next year too? It, it includes, actually, I'm going to bring up the business manager to give you an, um, the breakdown of the default. The reason why I'm asking that, just to let you know, I'm not trying to, you know, spite anybody, put anybody in a corner. That's the questions I'm going to give, because you know as well as I do that people are going to look at the top line and the bottom line, and what they're going to vote for, most of them will vote for the one that's lower. Right, and, and it, I don't want them to vote the one that's lower, but we have at least I can have an idea, and the budget committee members here can have an idea to say we want to vote for this budget and not necessarily the default. So you're saying 11 2? Yeah, right. It hasn't changed, right, Mary? Right. It's going to be about $1.1 million less than the recommended budget. All right. Before, before we go on, I'm going to, out of respect to Todd, he was standing, and then I'll, and I understand that uh, Todd. Right? Todd Kalansky, yeah. I'd like to make a suggestion. If people are in a hurry to get this done, handing out the information to the budget committee tw 20 minutes before the budget meeting starts, or even the day of the meeting starts, probably isn't a good way to, 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 to no. hurry up the process. You know, Agreed. I understand the information wasn't handed out. I think if we're, if we're going to work together in this process, the information should be handed out within 48 hours of the meeting to give everybody the time to be able to look at the information. So then when we're at this meeting, we're not wasting time. Yeah. Things can happen a little faster. Well, and that's why I said there was still a lot we could go over that wasn't this. Because right. There is but if you had the information two days ago and started looking at it, then tonight you might have been able to say, you know what? I do have a good educational guess on what I'm going to vote for. Sure. Just a heads up. Yeah. Well. Okay, Lindsay, before Mary speaks, um, did you say that one point one less than the proposed budget, the default budget is practically one? I, is that accurate? Yes. And why that is is because we have to pull out one time expenditures. And remember the $550,000 that in that Warren article, I want to say it was six that passed, that comes right off the top. Right. And we have to take that off. And then we take off like um, any uh, contracts that we had and we put in the new ones. So for instance, the cost of educating our kids in Keene is going down. So I would take away the higher number, put in the lower number, and that drives the default budget down. And the whole purpose of a default budget is to take what you had last year and just pull anything out that would be a one-time expenditure, add back in contracts that you have to have, and that's it. And that's why it's so much lower than what it is. Your default budget yep. okay, is your existing budget this year plus your contractual obligations When it goes on, it's your, 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 the budget that you worked with this year, add in your contractual services you anticipate for next year, and that can be your default budget. Is that or is that not accurate? Yes, and there's a few other little things. Um, most of the, like for instance, New Hampshire retirement. That is, con that is something we have to do. So every person that gets New Hampshire retirement, such as administration, teachers, special educators, I add that amount in there too. But that went up this year already. Yeah, yeah. No, no, up. it went up, it's going up next year. For next year, but that's already in your budget. No, this year it's lower, it's 17.8%. It's going to 21.02% on teachers. So it's going up in the next year's budget. So you're gonna see a difference there. You're going to. Not huge, though. 125,000. That's huge. Okay. It's a big, because it's, I mean, we had a big jump between um, employees and teachers. <laughs> Both of them went up quite a bit um, this year. And that's for two years, though. So that won't change again until 2023 or 23 24 budget again, if they decide to change it again. So. But you, you have the gist of it. That, that is, you are correct in what you're saying. 
but anything that's mostly it's special ed items that you can put on a default budget. Um, regular ed items it isn't, you know, most contractual items are related to special ed. Okay. With the, thank, you. Yeah. thank you, Mary. If, you know, <laughs> okay. Thank Thanks. you. One point one. Okay, so the I, I guess the next important piece of business before us is to come up with a date for the next meeting. I, I don't see any reason to not have one next Tuesday, and if we can make it on Zoom, let's do that. If that's agreeable to everybody. Six p.m. Yeah. Provided we can get access to Zoom, if we can't, then we'll plan on being here. It's I can't imagine why we to... couldn't. But I'll be I'll be here because as we found when me and Natalie tried to do our debate and Kevin was there for, I don't have enough service at my house to Zoom, so I'll be right here using the Wi-Fi so I can Zoom. But it was just because you were in your basement, not, but you were in the main part of your house. Fifteen. Well, even when I went out on the porch to actually do that thing, I had to shut my, my camera off and everything to be able to participate, and it still was kind of spotty. And, and, you know, furthermore, just out of consideration to everybody that came tonight so it's, we plan to be here on the 15th and let's try to hammer something home that night or as much as we can because we do have timelines yeah I, I will in just a second uh, I just want to make sure everybody here can use zoom correct you guys know how to do that I, I do. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, nothing's stopping you from zooming from here. So. All right. At this time, is there any comments from the audience? Not surprised, but we didn't really go over much. Chester, do you want to just run down the timeline and look at some of the other dates that might be pertinent? Yeah. I mean, I yeah. If you, you, you please do. Um. So our last day to post is the 12th, um, and then we have to hold a public hearing um, at, on or before January 19th. I think last year you did both the town and the school together, so I'm assuming you would we would yeah. do the same again. Um, it only makes sense rather than posting two public hearings. And then uh, I'm just wondering when we will meet to go over warrant articles. Yeah. Um, in years past, we've, the budget committees met somewhere around the first week of January to review Warren articles. Um, so in keeping with Tuesdays, are you thinking Tuesday, January 5th? Yes, that would be, I think. Are you anticipating a lot of just the standard Warren articles now that it's done? So we have, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> we do have our standard Warren articles. <clears throat> excuse me. We have um, the teacher's contract, which we're still negotiating. Um, we have the election of members, which we have nothing to do with. We have the um, special education fund, which we're still discussing. Um, the capital reserve, which we've already approved in the amount of 125000 and then we also have the deficit warrant article. Um, we've been doing a lot of research about the deficit. Um, and actually, I, I do have some information for the budget committee uh, for consideration for our next meeting and if there's any additional questions. So it was noted um, recently that the, the town has um, about just shy of $700,000 or so that's in their um, unreserved general fund. I apologize if I'm calling it something that the school calls it and the town doesn't. Uh, and that the school has a deficit of $712,000. That, that's not our general fund, that's our unreserved fund. Unreserved fund, thank right. you. Those are two separate funds. Thank you. <laughs> so in the unreserved fund, the, uh, the town has um, an excess that they've noted as being held. Um, it was brought up at the select board meeting. Um, and then some additional information was brought forward between our business manager 
and superintendent at our last meeting. So again, the school needs to put a deficit warrant article on the um, ballot this year. We need to clear out the deficit that we've been carrying since the audits were not performed uh, yearly over the course of however many years. All of this is, is prior to my time, prior to our current business manager, prior to our current superintendent. Mm -hmm. And now that all of the audits have come forward, we have 712,000. Um, we were talking about this 18 months ago where there was an over return to the town. To so the, the taxpayers, not the town of Winchester. Not the town, like the business part of the town is the taxpayers. That's where the money's returned to. Um, and so the board wants to finally resolve this deficit. There are several ways that we can do that. Um, we can put a deficit warrant article for the total amount. That's a significant amount. It, we have talked about taking money um, from our special education capital reserve. We did overspend in special education last year, so we could recover some of that reserve. Um, and actually, the third way that is possible, um, and we, the school board would like the budget committee to consider, is the budget committee can place a warrant on the ballot to utilize some of the town's general fund to offset that deficit. So for instance, if we pulled 100 or 200,000 from our special education and the budget committee put a $200,000 warrant on the, on the um, ballot, we would then still list um, 300,000 to be paid over the course of two years. So we would be able to greatly reduce that overall deficit um, between money that's already been raised and appropriated in taxes to special education and money that's already been raised and returned in uh, the general fund and then just a small amount that would be left for deficit. What, and now you're familiar with this, Ben? Uh, well, I am, except Lindsay <coughs> keeps calling it the general fund. It's the unreserved fund, and by RSA, the town can only touch that fund in, in the event of a natural disaster or to offset taxation when setting the tax rate. Um, the town cannot man. dip into the unreserved fund just to so it, it's true for anything else. The select board cannot. The budget committee can, in an effort to reduce a tax burden that might otherwise be levied against the taxpayers. And this is money that's already raised? Um, the, Amy is actually coming in tomorrow night because Kevin asked the question last week as to where that money comes from because um, that's just the number the DRA gives the town. We honestly have no clue how they come up with that number. Well, I think uh, well, tomorrow night will be an interesting night then. Yep. Well, as far as I understand, that money came from two places, and that was um, additional monies in the water and sewer, and um, additional revenue in, or excuse me, um, unanticipated revenue that the town hadn't expected. So I guess one question would be, what would be the disposition of this funds if we didn't do this? What? I honestly don't know because right from the town's attorney um that fund can only be used for in case of a natural disaster or and or to offset tax the tax rate when we set the tax rate but her point is that you can in theory we could in, I, I guess the, uh, the attorney just the, the attorney just told me that nobody can he didn't he didn't say i asked can that fund be dipped into for any reasons other than what RSA states, and he said I mean, no. As I said, there's a way to do it. The money's just sitting there. We're not doing anything with it. It's well, it's like recommended it. by the Department of Revenue, by the IRS, and by everybody that you keep 5% of the towns and the school, because the school has an unreserved fund that they set up three years ago. It was voted in. And there's no money in our unreserved fund because well, we've that, had no money to return to okay, it. Okay, but I'm just saying the school has an unreserved fund. Um, go ahead. The school's unreserved fund doesn't work the same as the town's because the school is not allowed to hold money. 
It can hold money for one year. They voted one year to hold $50,000. And the only way that can be used is to go to the Department of Ed for an emergency situation such as maybe your roof fell in or something like that, or to offset taxes. But if they don't renew that in the next year, it goes back into taxes and gets returned to the taxpayer. Yours sits. And from what I understand, that the selectmen can use it to reduce taxation, but the budget committee can use it to, say for instance, you guys are buying a, a, I don't know, a truck. The budget committee could say, well, we want to use part of that money to pay for the truck. So it would be a, it would be a non, what's the term I'm looking for, taxation impact to the town. And from what I understand, the budget committee can do that. The selectmen can't, but the budget committee can't. And Ben, you know, by all means check, but that's what I understand about it, and that's right. how I've seen it operate in other well, towns. I, I, would, I would definitely, just as I would do on the select board, if it was a request to the select board, I would ask that it, we get a legal opinion on it first from the town's attorney. Yeah, because, you know, like I said, I did read your MS 535, and you spent 250000 you had left of your money that you didn't spend on, that was budgeted and appropriated to you, and then the remainder came from, on a, under whatever you want to call it, revenues, like revenues. you said, revenues like that you were expecting. Yeah, I don't. So we'd like to make a motion. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to direct Ben, as a member of the budget committee, on our behalf to speak with the town attorney and get in a written decision based on this question of whether the budget committee can, in fact, take money and you and utilize it towards the school deficit. That's my motion. Second. I think that that needs to happen because motion, you shouldn't be calling attorneys unless this majority, this board says that you representing yourself as a budget committee member should do right. that. Is Correct. There, is there a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. It's approved. If you could get them. to do that? Yeah. Get a written decision so we can have it. I'll email him and he'll email me back that we have that way we have documentation of the question and the answer. Yeah, and if we and if we could have it for the fifteenth. Yeah. Thank you. All right, perfect. All right. Uh, where are we at now? I think so uh, the next week. Warrants. Yeah. So. The, yep. So just so everybody has it, the 15th is our next meeting. I uh, will have the warrant meeting on the 5th. We'll have a date for, okay, I must have written this down in a hurry. Uh, so we have to have the last date for any warrants is for the 12th of January? No, no, the, the 12th would be the last day you can post, post. for you. the public hearing because it has to be posted. Yeah, so let's figure that out right now. By, by the 19th, we have to have the public hearing. Right, so, so let's figure that one out. I so. believe the 19th is a Tuesday also. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, the 19th would be a good date for that, although it's kind of hazy if we have a snowstorm. But. Yeah. Um, and that public hearing really shouldn't take long, because by then we should have everything, we should be done and ready by then, so that public hearing really shouldn't take too awfully long. What if we scheduled one for the Thursday before with a snow date of the 19th? So you're suggesting the 14th for public? Would, do you guys have that, a school that board might, meeting that, that Thursday? No. Board. No, our school board meetings will be the, the 7th and the 21st. Oh, well then. That, 14th that, as needed. So then that makes needed. sense then. Yeah. Okay, so what date are we talking? 14th for the public of January. With a, with a... Six o'clock. I would like to, I would like that posting to show a snow date of the 19th. That way we can post, that way both dates will be posted. That way if it is terrible weather on the 14th for some reason, we can postpone it without having to repost it and end yeah. up going past the deadline. I agree, that's prudent. 19th. 14th is the uh, is the scheduled date. 19th will be the snow date. 
And unfortunately, if it snows both days, we have to hold it on the 19th if, by well, law. Well, I mean, if, if for any reason that were to become an issue, I'm sure that we could probably hijack the school's Zoom platform again and meet virtually. Very good. Um, I just want to make sure, you know, that there are no other questions that documentation might be needed for. Our administration is obviously working incredibly hard to maintain their usual job duties and provide any additional information that this board or budget committee asks for. Um, and so if there's something else that's needed, maybe we could. That is a valid point because if, if, if you don't ask for it now, we really can't use that as an excuse next meeting, so. Well, no, I, I mean, I'm not using it as an no, excuse. I, I, I'm, I, I'm definitely very, meeting. I'm definitely very happy as I stated at the beginning of the meeting with the uh, work that administration did to get these these answers together for us. And mm -hmm. the, I'm confident that all the answers I was looking for is in the paperwork we received tonight. So I don't have any, or foresee having any other new questions. All right. Then, um, we, go ahead. Uh, the only, the last thing I had, um, I just wanted to say thank you to Mary, because if I, unless I've missed something in a meeting, um, she only has three days left working with Winchester, and yes. Mary's definitely, even though it's no secret in the world that me and Mary have bumped heads a few times over the course of the last few years, um, but it's definitely um, been a pleasure, I'll say, working um, through the budget process, and um, good luck to you on your next adventure. Thank you. That would be another reason why any information that you're asking for, it would be greatly appreciated because once Mary leaves on Friday, we're by the hour. And I'm sure once Mary leaves on Friday, she's going through her phone and deleting this number and this number and this <laughs> number. And she is no longer answering calls from numbers she doesn't recognize. Actually, <laughs> she specifically said, don't forget you can still call me. And we were like, block us. Just block us. <laughs> I don't know. I just changed jobs and I deleted a lot of numbers out of my phone. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything? I just have a, a point of uh, clarification in regards to the uh, default number or the what we think the default number is going to be for the school. Uh, in, the in the previous meeting, uh, it was said that the school board um, recommended a budget of 12,835,487 with a default number of 11,200. We're looking at a lot more than 1.1 million in difference. I just want to make sure okay. everyone knows the... Uh, yeah. So I was incorrect. So we're looking at you know more of a one point five million dollar difference. <laughs> with, the, with the projected um, budget being um, right? Right. So the default so I took is the twelve eight number um, out of the minutes from the previous meeting that Lindsay said that the school board had recommended that budget. Yeah. yeah. So the default is going to be more like eleven seven. Oh okay. Because it's right, one point right. one below the recommended. Okay, so eleven seven. All right. Sorry, Kevin. Thank you for clarifying. Brendan Howard, sixty six Woodard Avenue. Um, I was a little alarmed to hear that the deficit was over seven hundred thousand. The last number I heard was like three hundred and eighty. I just wondering if you could possibly elaborate on maybe some findings that you guys came up with or so the deficit that we've been carrying, that we have been talking about the, the most is the 385 plus 88,000 from the access. So for, I'm sorry, my math is waning at the end of the day, it's for something. Um, in the last two years worth of audit, actually this last year, we also um, recognized an, an overestimate of revenue on Medicare and excuse me, Medicaid anticipated revenue that we would be receiving from Medicaid of 125,000, which was not received. Okay. 
All right, so that was the next section of it. Mary, what am I forgetting? I know there's another number. It's, it's Medicaid for two years, part of Thank two you. years, but also it's from previously, before my time, we've also been carrying um, revenues that we were in, thought we were going to receive from, how do I want to say this, from grants prior years. And over those past couple of years, I've been taking those and saying, okay, well, we know we're not going to get this money. So we need to move it. And the auditor says we need to move it. Well, now we've moved any unanticipated or, you know, revenues that we thought were going to be received from those years. And now we're, we're done. So it's, it's revenues. That's what it comes down to. So unanticipated revenue, uh, unanticipated shortage of yeah. revenues from previous years. I will do my best. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Yeah. All right. So we have the schedules. We have that laid out. We know what we're doing next week. Does anybody have anything else they want to say? Can I just make a public comment? Then? Please do. Um, as a public comment, I think the, um, the budget committee, uh, I hate to beat the dead horse, but um, I think the budget committee should reconsider their um, their vote on the mask ordinance. I think um, there's a couple of differences in regards to um, it's the public's right to be able to be present here at these meetings. And if the meetings then go online, as been documented, there's a lot of people in town that won't be able to um, view the meeting online. So they don't now they don't have access to a meeting that everyone really should have access to. Uh, again, it's the right of the public, of everyone in Winchester, to feel safe. Well, to be able to come to a meeting and feel safe at a meeting. And when you, you're, you're just giving the impression that the budget committee doesn't think that people should feel safe when they come to the meeting. And I think that, I, I, I think that should be reconsidered. Well, I agree, but I wasn't in the majority, so I can't reconsider it. Natalie Cavado, 112 Ish Wheeler Street. I was also not going to beat a dead horse, but since Kevin brought it up, <laughs> I figured I'd talk about it. Um, so I have an underlining health condition. Um, I will not say what that is, but I come to every single meeting that this town has. I record it and I bring it to the public. Now, for I was very happy when the budget committee first passed this, because it made me feel safe. Um, and as you can see, as I'm sitting over there hacking up a lung, it's not safe for me to be in a closed room with people that are unmasked in an unventilated area. So I'm happy that you're gonna have a Zoom meeting next week. I don't think it's fair that I have to sacrifice my health to, to make sure that the public can come to these meetings. Um, I also don't think it's fair that the people that want to attend can't attend because they don't feel safe. And if I can't record it, then they, they can't participate either. So rather than the few people that are healthy who don't want to wear a mask, I don't think it's a huge inconvenience for them to wear them for the safety of somebody who could die, whether, whether, whether or not you believe in COVID. So thank you. Well, my, my rationality for supporting a mask is because we expect people to show up to give uh, you know, discussion on these budgets and it just to me seemed to make the most sense. If for no other reason than we ask people to be here. I just follow the governor's orders. Yeah. You and I are in the majority, I think the minority. Well, you, you were yeah, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not revisiting it. And it was a, you voted yes for the motion that you made. You voted right. no. I voted, I voted no. The, the mask. Right. Yes. You, right. you, vote, you, you three voted together on that. We all, the three of us voted no, so it failed. No, I voted no. No, the three of us voted no, and it failed. Because I, I will not vote to go against the governor's executive order. Um, so I guess my last comment just is, I, I had the chance to review the minutes again while I was sitting over there. Tiffany, you don't have to ask. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. But you did vote that you did approve of the masks in the email chain. 
I was wondering why you changed your vote. Siding with Ben and the governor's executive orders and the unclearness of, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry. Going with Ben on the aspect of the governor's guidelines and reviewing that and taking that into consideration as well in the original motion where it wasn't fully clear. Okay, thank you. And just for the record, that original email conversation that we that keeps getting referenced was was happened long before, well, a week or two before this the previous uh, governor's updated executive order. And it's also part of the minutes. Yeah, so it is record. Right. Yeah. Okay. So then this board decided to take an action um, to for the safety of you know, our residents ahead of the governor, correct? Yes? One could say that. Okay. So the board did act as if it is a legislative body in that regard, yes? I'm not certain that's accurate. Okay. So because the governor has put forth guidelines, is it not okay for this board to also put forth guidelines? It, it was, executive it, it was, it was my guidelines. understanding uh, that we could impose a mask requirement if we wanted to. Most like, like the city of Keene as well, right. correct? It, Thank it, you. Yeah, and, yeah. Go ahead. Jennifer Howe, Old Chesterfield Road. And um, just as a member of the broadband committee, it, I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware. We currently only know 12% of our residents have um, reliable internet as of right now so that's another concern for participation you're saying only 12 percent of winchester has broadband internet they have 25 upload three or 25 download three upload speed oh. which is considered reliable <coughs> it's just, just another point huh i would never have thought it was that low which also reminds me <coughs> excuse me um, even though it's really not a budget meeting issue, I do want to remind everybody, both at home watching and here in the room, to fill out the surveys for, on the broadband that was mailed home to everybody and get them in. And if somebody did not receive one for some reason, contact the town hall and Carrie can do what she can to get one out to you. All right. If that's it, I will accept a motion to uh, adjourn if one is offered. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 That's, that's a wrap. Starting to think we're going to have to spend the night here. Uh,